Hey everyone, it's Kathleen from Relatively Refined. Today's video is a recap of my staycation. I will share with you a recent thrift haul, take you on a walk with me in my favorite spot in the woods just up the road, share with you a newfound recipe that has quickly become an absolute family favorite, and the reason, one of the reasons we took a staycation was to help our daughter who recently purchased a 1900 old home and is in the process, the beginning stages of renovating the home entirely. So if this sounds good to you, stay with me, let's go. So I am here, I have all of my thrift finds that I gathered from my staycation thrifting to two little trips. And as I put them all out, I'm like, oh my gosh, everything I bought is green or purple. So I must have had some sort of a color. Uh, I went in with, a, with an idea of a color that I wanted to purchase because everything I did pretty much has that in it, including this jacket. So I was able to purchase this beautiful jacket for like $4 at the Goodwill. Um, it's a lightweight jacket, uh, so it'd be really perfect for spring. And you can see in the picture um, what it looks like in full length. But it's a really, it was in mint condition and it's a very quality piece. Like I said, I do like to buy clothing and I'm very particular about the brands and the, the clothing that I do buy. So that was the first thing and that is purple. The other purple item that I bought um, was this really sweet little vase. It's a hand built little ceramic vase with purple and green, the two colors that I seem to have found a lot of over my um, over my thrifting tours. And this is a very simple, I, uh, it's a tiny little opening. So I put one little purple tulip in it just to give you a sense of how big it is. Um, but it's a, it's beautiful. It's very small and makes a big statement with that beautiful purple and green color combination. And I'm just gonna keep it on the windowsill with one flower. This happens to be a real tulip. Um, I may look to see if I can find some faux or some dried flowers that might also look good in this. Um, but it does hold water, it's perfect, it's a real vase, so it worked fine for my purple tulip. And speaking of flowers and green, I found this really beautiful vase, tall vase. I'm thinking it will be perfect for hydrangeas when they're out or a big thing of daisies or um, it's quite tall. I tried a, a bouquet of tulips in it and they didn't sit the way I liked them to. So I think it's gonna need something that's really big and kind of bushy almost at the top. So um, I'm really thinking hydrangeas or lilacs. It would look beautiful with a bouquet of lilacs. Again, that purple and green, lilacs being the color of my jacket here. And I will put that, use that out in our sunroom or, or inside. But I just, there, I, the green caught my eye. There's no markings on it. Um, I washed it up and it seems it's perfect. Um, I just, like I said, I loved the color and I liked the size um, being tall for some bigger bouquets of, um, of natural flowers when they come out. I think that was $5 at the local thrift store. I also got um, three pieces of this floral foam. It's really kind of expensive at the store. And um, spoiler alert, I am planning on doing an Easter or slash spring centerpiece with you. And I think I'm gonna use some floral foam for it. I'm, I don't have any, I didn't have any, but there were three blocks of it and each block was $1.29. So I thought that was probably a very, very good price. Um, so I picked up these three floral foam blocks and I'm gonna reach down here. I also got this big bag of Spanish, green Spanish moss, which will come in really handy in, in hurricanes or in centerpieces. Um, you know, and again, it was $2 and 29 cents. And I think it's really kind of expensive if you go into Joann's or Michael's and get a, get it new. So I'm always on the lookout for 
these kinds of things that um, the Goodwill still prices very, very reasonably. Um, some of their things seem to have gotten a little bit pricey, but the crafting type stuff like that is, is quite reasonable. I mean, like for $2, I couldn't pass it up. And then the last thing, um, actually I got two things, but they were both free. These interesting, um, bear with me as I grab them here. They're like sticks or vines. Um, these were free. And I have a grand plan for these. And I've been kind of looking for them out in nature. And I haven't found any with some cool twists and turns. So I was super psyched when I saw these for free. Um, and, I'm, and I believe they will be featured in my, um, my centerpiece. So we'll have to see how that comes out. But there's some thick ones, like some really, some of them are thinner. And then like this one is really quite thick and gnarly. Um, so I was very excited about that. They have great texture, they have great height, and I think they're gonna be really cool in the centerpiece that I have planning and sort of brewing in the back of my head. And my last um, item is also green, and it was free, and that is um, this kind of vintage motel chair. And I'll, you can see in the picture up here, it needs a little bit of cleaning and probably a little bit of work, maybe a, maybe a fresh coat of paint or spray paint on it, but it was free. And um, I'm not sure, maybe it'll go my daughter's new home, but probably it will go where my son lives in Burlington and just be one more you know, seat out on their, out on their pergola and their deck out the back because they can always use more seating when they have friends over. So that was one of the things um, I was excited to do, to take my time to get to these two thrift stores that I don't often get to when it's busy during the work week um, and just be very selective and, and thoughtful about what I got. And I, I think it was a success. We are so fortunate to live just down the street from this beautiful woods trail. And so every day on my staycation, I took a walk, a couple of loops for about 45 minutes in this gorgeous spot. And the funny thing is, uh, even though I went every single day, every single day was different and it was just magical. So I'm just gonna share with you some footage of those beautiful walks. Okay, so the first thing you do is to cut the spaghetti squash in half lengthwise. It's probably the hardest part of this whole recipe. They can be a little bit hard to cut. Once I get it to that point, I just kind of rip it apart and you'll need to scrape out the insides. I like to use a grapefruit spoon to scrape out the insides. Um, you know, the seeds and I call them the guts. So you scrape those out. The spaghetti squash is such a healthy alternative to spaghetti. It really does. I use it a lot instead of spaghetti. Um, I've made it with different sauces on it. But this recipe, because it bakes for a good 40, 45 minutes in the oven, it is absolutely delicious. Your house will smell like an Italian restaurant as it's cooking. All right, we'll scrape all that out. And then you are going to just drizzle that with some olive oil. I'm using uh, Kirkland or Costco olive oil. 
It's my favorite. Matter of fact, I'm almost out. I'm going to have to make a trip up there. Okay. Once you do that, you add a little salt and pepper. And this is where I add my chili crisps. I just take a small, I use the same little spoon that I cleaned the squash with, you know, about maybe a teaspoonful like that. And you can see it's the really red chili uh, plates. And I put it right in there and I just kind of sprawled around. It has some oils and oil based but it has a sweet and a spiciness to it that is delicious. And if you don't have this, you can certainly just use the red pepper flakes. Okay, so that goes in there next. Then you take your block feta, and the package I showed you was, um, this is half of that, and then you're gonna cut that in half again. And you actually, some of the recipes tend to put it in whole. I kind of break it up a little bit. I like to have it broken up a little bit. It does melt and it gets mixed in, but to avoid any really large chunks, I just break it up. And you put a quarter of the block in each half. These are really big spaghetti squashes. Um, so I'm tempted. I think I will add just a little bit extra feta just because they are so big. And they're, how can you go wrong with more cheese? It looks like a lot, but trust me, each spaghetti squash has quite a bit of squash in it. Okay, so you do that. And then, then you're going to add the tomatoes. And you add quite a few, about three quarters of a cup in each half. So you really, they, they just roast right in the oven. They're just so good. Plop them in there. I try to fit as many as I can because, one, I love tomatoes. And then we're going to add a clove of fresh garlic to each half. So there's one. I'm going to use a fairly large clove. Again, I like fresh garlic, so I have two cloves. And I will mince that and spread it right along the tomatoes. You could always use um, garlic paste if you had it or already um, minced up. Sometimes you can get a jar of minced garlic. I don't have any of that. I I actually planted garlic last year um, and it was so good, fresh. So I planted some more and it will be coming up, probably coming up soon, although you don't harvest it for a while, but it's so exciting to see it come up. Okay, and I'm using my garlic press. I'm just gonna press that in and put plenty, whoops, lost a tomato. Some in the other side. I love garlic, so you can never have too much garlic, in my opinion. Matter of fact, that one looks like it got short changed. I'm going to add a little bit more. Got the smaller clove.
we have this for dinner, just this plain. I really don't serve. Sometimes I might have a salad with it, but it has the tomatoes in it. Um, I think with this particular meal, I'm going to serve it with some non bread that's heated up so you can kind of dip it in there um, and get the spaghetti squash and the cheese and everything and kind of scoop it up with the bread. All right, I'll give this one a little extra garlic. It seemed to be shy on the garlic. Not anymore. Okay. We then add our spices. So this is oregano and I eyeball it. Just putting it in. Like I said, if you have fresh, better, but I didn't. Although hopefully in the summer when the herbs are coming up, we can replace the dried herbs with the fresh ones. And this is basil. And I always have tons of basil in the garden, so I can't wait for that. You, know, you put a healthy dose in there. It's like there's quite a bit of wash. And when you are done with that, a little extra drizzle of olive oil. Just to kind of make sure the tomatoes will get nice and roasted down. And one more pepper. One more salt. And then all you do is you're going to put it on a cookie tray, cover it with parchment paper, and put it into a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes. It takes a little while for it to cook. These are very large ones. So the way I just take a fork and I, you know, prick it into the squash. And if it goes in easily, you know, it's done. But it's been taking about 45 minutes. So I'm going to put those in and. In 45 minutes, we'll take them out and I'll show you how they came out. Okay, so it's been 45 minutes. I think it's done. I'm going to just poke it in. Oh, yeah. You see how it's just the tomatoes really roast down. There's lots of juice in there from the tomatoes and the olive oil. And there's the cheese. And then you end up just scooping all of this. It's absolutely delicious. I will link the recipe in the description box so you too can try it. And if you do, let me know what you think. I think it's one of our favorites. So our big news is that our daughter and her partner bought a house. They have been looking for several years and the housing market in Vermont has made it very, very difficult for them to buy. But a couple of weeks ago, they bought their dream home. It is an 1900s fixer upper in their dream town. And so my husband and I thought we would go up and help them get started on the reno project. It is a dirty job and it's a lot of work, but she's lived with us and so she knows the process and has been through it before. But they started by tearing out the plaster and lath and that is a huge job. The end result is absolutely stunning. And the house is 1500 square feet, so it's manageable and they are just finding all kinds of treasures as they work their way through every inch of this house. So my plan is to give you some updates every now and again on their progress. So far, it's only been a couple of weeks and they have probably 75% of the house down to the studs and they will just keep on going. So that means my husband and I get to make quite a few trips up north, a couple of hours up north to help them with this process, but they are so excited. They've uncovered beautiful brick. They've uncovered some vaulted ceilings. They even found a set of dishes and a whole box of Hardy Boys books. So who knows what else we will find, but I thought I would give you a sneak peek and a preview at the work that we will be doing with them over the next year.
Thank you so much for joining me on my staycation. It was a great week. I feel like we got a lot accomplished and got in a little rest and relaxation as well. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.